Two-way tables conditional relative frequency, we're at 13.4b. If you missed the first part of this lesson, 13.4a, there's a link in the description, and we talked about two-way tables and joint and marginal relative frequency. So we just learned that joint relative frequency is the ratio of the frequency in a particular category divided by the total number of data values. We've also learned that marginal relative frequency is the sum of the joint relative frequencies in a row or column of a two-way table. We'll go over this a little bit more in this video. Suppose we asked a total of 20 people, children and adults, if they liked scary movies. For joint relative frequencies, we divide each value by the total. So we have three children who say yes, they like scary movies, but eight say no. That's 11 children. For the adults, we have seven who say yes and two that say no. That's nine. 11 and nine, that means we have 20 people asked. So, for the joint relative frequency of children who like scary movies, we have this three for yes over the entire amount 20. That gives us a 0.15. For the no, we have eight over the 20. That gives us a 0.4. For the adults, yes, we have seven over 20. That gives us a 0.35. And for the adults, no, we have a two over the 20. That gives us a 0.1. For the marginal relative frequencies, we add each row and column. So 0.15 plus 0.35 gives us a 0 0.5. 0 0.4 plus 0.1 gives us a 0 0.5. And if we add this way, 0.15 plus 0.4 gives us a 0 0.55. And 0 0.35 plus 0.1 gives us a 0 0.45. We total this and we get one whole. We total these and we get one whole. So this box should have a one in it. To find a conditional relative frequency, we divide the joint relative frequency by the marginal relative frequency. And we can use conditional relative frequency to find conditional probability. So the probability of liking scary movies as an adult is equal to 0.35 over 0.45. We would find 0.35 divided by 0.45 and it would give us approximately 0.78. We did this adult yes 0.35 and we divided it by the total 0.45. That's how we got our approximately 0.78. We can use conditional relative frequency to find probability. 100 randomly selected people were asked if they owned a dog or cat. And this table shows the results. So here we have they own a cat, that's a yes, and here's a no. Here's owns a dog, that's a yes, and that's a no. If we total 15 plus 24 plus 18 plus 43, we're going to have 100. So the people here that say, yes, they own a dog, that are here, yes, they own a cat, that means they both own a cat and a dog. These people own a dog, but not a cat. These people own a cat, but not a dog, see? And these people don't own a dog or a cat. We can make a table of joint and marginal relative frequencies. So here we have our information of owning a cat and owning a dog. And we know there's a total of 100 here. So for this owns a dog, yes, and owns a cat, yes, we have 15 over that total 100. That gives us a 0.15. For owns a dog but doesn't own a cat, we, this no, we have 24. That's 24 over 100, or 0.24. For the dog, no, but cat, yes, we have 18, so that's 18 over 100, or 0 0.18, 18 hundredths. Then we have 43 hundredths for they don't own a dog or a cat. We total the 0 0.15 and the 0 0.18 and get 0 0.33. We total the no's here, 
0.24 and 0.43 gives us a 0.67. If we total these two numbers, we're going to get a 1. When we total the 0.15 and the 0.24, we get 0 0.39. 0 0.18 plus 0 0.43 gives us a 0 0.61. When we total these, we get a 1. If we're given that a person has a dog, what is the probability that the person also has a cat? We use the conditional relative frequency for the row with the condition owns a dog. And the total for people with dogs is 0.39, right here, or 39%. And out of these, 0.15 or 15% also own cats. See? 0 0.15, 0 0.39. The conditional relative frequency is the quotient of 0.15 and 0.39. We get this nice long decimal, which we can round to approximately 0.38, 38 hundredths. So given that a person has a dog, there's a probability of about 0.38 that they also have a cat out of these 100 randomly selected people that were asked. We can compare conditional probabilities. Lisa's trying to find the best possible route to drive to work, and she has a choice of three possible routes. Well, each day she randomly selects a route and keeps track of whether she is late, and she takes notes during a 40-day trial. We can use conditional probabilities to determine the best route for Lisa to take to work. So she made a tally table. She made a column for being late and a column for not late. We have route A, B, and C. Route A, she was late four times. She was not late ten times. Route B, she was late three times. And she was not late seven times. Route C, she was late four times and not late twelve times. Now we create a table of joint and marginal relative frequencies. And there's 40 data values because she did a 40-day trial. So we divide each frequency by 40. For route A, she was late four times, and we put it over the 40. Four fortieths is equal to 0.1. For not late, we have a 10, so that's going to be a 10 over a 40. That's 1 fourth, or 0.25. For route B, we have 3 over 40 for late, and 7 over 40 for not late. For route C, we have 4 over 40 for late and 12 fortieths for not late. We find their decimal equivalents and we add 0.1 plus 0 0.075 plus 0.1 and get 0.275, adding this column. We add this column for not late and get 0.725. We add this and this and it should equal a 1. We add the route A and we get 0.35. We add the late and non-late for route B and get 0.25, and the late and not late for route C and get a 0.4. When we add these, we get a 1. So to find the conditional probabilities, we divide the joint relative frequency of being late by the marginal relative frequency in each row. So the probability of being late if driving route A would be 0.1 over 0.35. We find the quotient, and it's approximately 0.29. The probability of being late if driving route B is the 0 0.075 over the 0 0.25. That comes out to a 3. The probability of being late if driving route C is this 0.1 over the 0.4. We find the quotient and get 0.25. So Route C has the lowest probability for Lisa being late. It's the smallest one. And based on this sample, Lisa is least likely to be late if she drives Route C. So we found the conditional probabilities by dividing the joint relative frequency of being late by the marginal relative frequency in each row. If you'd like more videos about probability, there's going to be a link to my Algebra 2 Chapter 15 playlist that talks about permutations, combinations, the binomial theorem, 
probability, even conditional probability, and simulating events. I think there's even advanced simulation of events. Our next video, we're going to have 13.5 broken into two parts. We're going to talk about simple event, compound event, mutually exclusive events. Then we're going to talk about inclusive events. And after this video, we're finished with high school geometry. So just keep in mind, there's nothing wrong with watching a video several times in order to completely grasp everything. Sometimes we can watch a movie and when we watch it a second time, we say, wow, I didn't see that the first time. So same thing with these math videos. You might see something a second time around that you didn't notice the first time. Okay. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye.